Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Karmakaze Moto. My name is Justin, and I'm about to give you some seriously valuable information on the Royal Enfield at Himalayan. Gonna make this lightning fast. I'm gonna show you how to diagnose a check engine light, a, war a warning light. We're gonna diagnose what the problem is on the bike, get that information from your ECU or your computer. We're gonna diagnose and we're gonna actually reset the ECU on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. And let me tell you, finding information for how to do this is a nightmare. I actually never did find it online how to do it. I found some information over here, somebody's comment over there, a couple ideas. I put it together and I made my own perfectly functional uh, routine for how to reset or clear the codes out in your ECU on the Himalayan. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to do everything. First off, let's take a look at the warning light. Royal Enfield calls the light, you'll see it here in a moment. They call it the MIL, I believe it stands for malfunction indicator lamp you see it there now typically when you start your bike that light will will uh, go out in my case the light is staying on now i did this on purpose uh in fact the way i did it if you ever want to test this i disconnected the fuel pump i turned the bike on and the computer recognizes that there's no fuel pump and it gets an error and it stores that error in the computer in the ecu Okay, so if I go to run my bike, that light is going to stay on. It makes me think I got a big problem. Okay, we're going to turn this off. Now, what we want to do is get that light to start blinking. It's going to blink, and it's almost like Morse code. It'll do a long blink and a short blink, and you can use the code to then determine what is actually the problem in your electronic fuel injection system. So let's make that sucker blink. Arguably, the most important tool in your toolkit Nowadays, in this day, day and age of technology, it's gonna be this little piece of wire. You just need a little flexible piece of wire, maybe uh, four or five inches long, something like that. Keep this with you at all times, okay? We're gonna use this piece of wire to get the check engine light to start blinking at us. Pop your seat off. Here's your air box, got your battery underneath here. Uh, if you saw my battery video switching over to lithium, I've got my battery turned around, so the positive is on this side for me. What you're looking for is this right here, that little connector that goes nowhere. So it's like a little dead end wire. You're looking for that. What you need to do is ground this wire to the frame. There happens to be a nice bolt right here. So I'm gonna take my piece of wire, I'm gonna stick it in there and then get the other end kind of jammed down in the side over here, get it grounded off. You could use a piece of tape. Uh, I found that with the tape, sometimes the wire wants to come loose and then you know the light's not blinking at you and you can't figure out why. This has to definitely be making good contact for this to work. If it doesn't work, you don't have good contact. Let me show it to you. Okay, you see, put a little curve or a couple little bends in the end of the wire before you stick it in, just, just small curves. That way when you stick it in there, it kind of holds tight. And then I've got uh, this end, I folded and I jammed it right between the bolt and this uh, bracket here um, or the bend in the frame it's got to be making good contact whatever you do come back up here make sure you're in the run position turn it on you're gonna see the light is gonna turn off and then it's gonna start blinking and I'm gonna count long and short blinks one two three four one Four long, one short. Okay, now, if you have more than one thing going wrong, you'll see a whole different sequence of blinking. And then it'll start repeating when it's done. In my case, I only have one problem. That particular code, the four long and the one short, means that there's a problem with the fuel pump. It could be that the fuel pump's not working. It could be that the connection is just bad. Uh, maybe you just need to disconnect or reconnect. I'm gonna tell you, I, I've read this before and I think I found this in my case. If you have a problem, a lot of times, more often than not, it's just a loose connection or a dirty connection, especially when you have a new bike like this. You know, you're not expecting things to be all corroded or a broken wire, but um, that may be usually just a loose connection. But now we know what the problem is. Now in my case, I don't actually have a problem. I made the light come on for you, 
Uh, my fuel pump is totally fine. My connection is fine. When I discovered all this stuff and how to do it, it, it actually was because of my fuel pump. I had disconnected it while working on my heated grips on the bike, and then I turned the bike on. If any of your sensors are disconnected and you turn the bike on, it's gonna throw an error in the ECU and you're gonna have that check engine light. So that's what happened. Nothing was actually broken. I caused it by accident and then I had to figure out, you know, how did that happen? Uh, so now let's, let's pretend whatever my problem was, I have now fixed it, I've corrected it, or you've corrected your problem. But the check engine light is still gonna be on. It's never gonna go away. Now, some people say that, uh, oh, well, after you cycle the key a few times, it'll go away. That's not the case. Some people will tell you, well, uh, disconnect the battery overnight or, you know, disconnect the battery and take the, the positive and negative cables of your bike and touch them together and dump all the power out of the, the computer and the memory and all that stuff. That'll clear it out or reset it. Does not work. And Royal Enfield tells you that you have to use their computer diagnostic tool uh, to, to reset the computer. Well, I don't have a dealership near me. That's not an option. And either way, that's not entirely truthful. You can do this yourself. Watch these steps. You'll be able to clear out or reset your ECU. Okay, how do you like my little heads up display? Look over in the mirror, people, the mirror. I can see you, you can see me. I can talk and do this at the same time a little bit. Here's what needs to happen. You need to keep the, um, the wire that you have, that little diagnostic wire that's connected to your frame, keep it connected. What I'm about to do is turn the throttle in the full open position, turn the key on, and we're going to watch the check engine light. It'll come on. But when the check engine light goes out, I'll release the throttle. And then you'll see the light blink two times really quickly before it starts giving us the error sequence. Okay. So this is the first step of resetting the ECU. There's basically just two steps. So first one, throttle, Watch for the light and everything. So do exactly as I do or it will not work. Again, that wire is still connected to the frame. Throttle fully open. Turn the ignition on. When the light goes out, I'm gonna release the throttle. Now watch, it's gonna blink real quick two times. There we go. Turn it off. That is the first step. The next thing you need to do is disconnect the wire from the frame and you need to run your bike three times. And then on the fourth time you start your bike, actually run it the fourth time, that light will go away. Let's make it happen. Okay, I'm disconnecting the wire. Here it is. I got my little wire here, not attached to the frame, very important. Now, it's really important that uh, you should have uh, a battery charger or something connected to your battery when you're doing all this stuff because you keep starting and stopping your bike you're just wearing the battery out right so have a battery charger on here also if you keep starting and stopping it uh it gets kind of confused <laughs> and it'll probably like you'll have a hard time starting it so just use your choke every time you start and you shouldn't have a problem with that okay so let's do our very first start here bike's in the run position turn it on Pull the choke, fire it up. Okay, that's one time. Pull the choke. That's two. That's three. What do you think? Is number four gonna be the magic time and that light's gonna go away? How about that? How sweet is that? You just successfully reset your very own Royal Enfield Himalayan ECU. Totally cleared out. You can now go ride, enjoy your day, have a little bit of confidence that you actually don't have a malfunction anymore. Awesome. There you have it. Diagnose the problem, fix the problem, then reset the ECU. Now, I just wanna be very clear. This was a culmination of information that I found. 
Uh, typically that information didn't really work. I had to sort of combine things and put my own little spin on it just a little bit. I haven't come across anybody that had this out there already. If they did and I'm repeating something, that's purely by chance. So uh, I just wanna make sure I had a good video and get through it quickly for you. Solve a lot of headaches for a lot of people, I think. So um, if this was useful to you or you think it's gonna be useful to somebody else in the future or whatever the case may be, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And honestly, if you think people need to know this information, then by all means, share this video out there, get it out there to everybody. I think thousands of people are gonna like uh, basically mitigate a lot of headaches by watching this video and learning what to do. Now, about the, uh, the, um, the codes, the error codes, all you gotta do is look in the description of this video. I'll put a list of all the error codes there so you can know what they are. I would print them off, copy and paste them, print them off, write them down, uh, write down the steps in this video and put that in your uh, owner's manual or I don't know, save it in your phone or put it in your toolkit or put it underneath your seat, whatever you gotta do. And make sure you have that little piece of wire. Most valuable bit of anything in your toolkit is that little piece of wire. Otherwise, you're gonna be stranded and you're gonna be calling the dealership to come, uh, I don't know, take care of everything for you. Well, that's not always enough, uh, that's not always feasible. So that's it again. Thumbs up, subscribe, share away, and I really appreciate everybody. Uh, have a great day, be safe, and enjoy the ride.